Trinity exposed number 26. Who rules during the millennium? The thousand year kingdom that happens in the future. After the time of Jacob's trouble, who is the one that rules and reigns on the earth? Another very interesting thing here. Isaiah chapter 2 verses 1 through 5. The word that Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, Come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come ye and let us walk in the light of the Lord. Um, it's not talking about Jesus in terms of his name being mentioned. It's talking about the God of Jacob. Who is that in the Old Testament? Who is the Lord in the Old Testament? The Father. So the Father is going to be ruling and reigning for the thousand-year kingdom. You say, but I thought it was Jesus Christ. Let's continue reading. Micah chapter 4, verses 1 through 3, similar to what's going on in Isaiah chapter 2. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow unto it. And many nations shall come and say, Come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For the law shall go forth out of Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up a sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. Again, one of the things out there. They have post-millennialism and amillennialism and things. And both of them reject the fact that, you know, the Lord is going to be ruling and reigning on this earth, physically on this earth. And you're going to, people are going to be able to go to Jerusalem and actually see him physically for the millennial kingdom. All right. But a lot of you probably are saying, I thought it was Jesus that rules for the millennial kingdom. But here in the Old Testament, there's prophecies. It's not saying anything about the Son of Man or the Son of God or Jesus. or It says God. The God of Jacob, the Lord. That's the Father. Let's continue. We'll tie this all together. Matthew chapter 5, verses 33 through 35 says, Again ye have heard, and this is Jesus speaking here in this passage, Again ye have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. But I say unto you, Swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Huh, interesting. Um, so you have the throne of God there in heaven, but yet the earth is his footstool. You mean to tell me that God could be in heaven and on the earth at the same time? Uh-huh. Body, soul. Not two separate gods, you see like the Trinitarians believe. Trinitarians say that there's two separate gods and that the Holy Spirit is a third God, you know, the third person of the Trinity, and he's just kind of fluttering around someplace. I guess he's omnipresent, how that works, you know. No one really knows. He's just omnipresent. He's out there as a third person, you know, <laughs> body, soul, spirit there. You know, weird. Revelation chapter 20, verses 4 through 6. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. I thought it was the God of Jacob that's there for the thousand years. It says, with Christ. Hmm. Verse 5. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Oh, wait, whoa, wait a second here. This has to be a misprint. You see, it says priests of God and of Christ. Well, there's two. 
and shall reign with him a thousand years. God, Christ, reign with him a thousand years. Old Testament, the God of Jacob, ruling and reigning for a thousand years. New Testament, book of Revelation, Christ, ruling and reigning for a thousand years. God and Christ shall reign with him. One being, not three. You better drop the Trinity heresy. <laughs>